Part Two of Oedipus. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Oedipus the King, by Sophocles, translation by F. Storr. My lot be still to lead the life of innocence, and fly irreverence in word or deed, to follow still those laws ordained on high, whose birthplace is the bright ethereal sky. No mortal birth they own, Olympus their progenitor alone. Ne'er shall they slumber in oblivion cold, the god in them is strong and grows not old. Of insolence is bred the tyrant, insolence full blown with empty riches surfeited, scales the precipitous height and grasps the throne, and topples door and lies in ruin prone, no foothold on that dizzy steep. But oh, may heaven that true patriot keep, who burns with emulous zeal to serve the state. God is my help and hope, on him I wait. But the proud sinner, or in word or deed that will not justice heed, nor reverence the shrine of images divine, perdition sees his vain imaginings. If urged by greed profane, he grasps at ill-got gain, and lays impious hand on holiest things. Who, when such deeds are done, can hope heaven's bolts to shun? If sin like this to honor can aspire, why dance I still and lead the sacred choir? No more I'll seek earth's central oracle, or abbey's hallowed cell, nor to Olympia bring my votive offering. If before all God's truth be not bade plain, O oh, Zeus, reveal thy might. King, if thou art named aright, omnipotent, all-seeing, as of old. For lies is forgot. His weird, many heed it not. Apollo is forsook, and faith grows cold. Enter Jocasta. My lords, you look amazed to see your queen with breaths and gifts of incense in her hands. I had a mind to visit the high shrines, for Oedipus is overwrought, alarmed with terrors manifold. He will not use his past experience like a man of sense, to judge the present needs, but lends an ear to any croaker if he augurs ill. Since then my counsels not avail, I turn to thee, our present help in time of trouble, Apollo, Lord Lycian. And to thee my prayers and supplications here I bring. Lighten us, Lord, and cleanse us from this curse, For now we all are cow-like mariners, Who see their helmsmen dumbstruck in the storm. Enter Corinthian Messenger. My masters, tell me where the palace is of Oedipus, Or better, where's the king? Here is the palace, the palace and he bides and he within. Bides within. This, is this is his queen, the mother, the mother of his mother children. Of his children. All happiness attend her in the house. Blessed is her husband and her marriage bed. My greetings to thee, stranger. Thy fair words deserve a like response. But tell me why thou comest, what thy need or what thy news. Good for thy consort and the royal house. What may it be? Whose messenger art thou? The Isthmian commons have resolved to make thy husband king. So twas reported there. What? Is not H. Polybus still king? No, verily. He's dead and in his grave. What? Is he dead? The sire of Oedipus? If I speak falsely, may I die myself. Quick, maiden, bear these tidings to my lord. Ye gods and oracles, where stand ye now? This is the man whom Oedipus long shunned, in dread to prove his murderer. And now... He dies in nature's course, not by his hand. Enter Oedipus. My wife, my queen, Jocasta, why hast thou summoned me from my palace? Hear this man, and as thou hearest, judge what has become of all those awe-inspiring oracles. 
Who is this man, and what is news for me? He comes from Corinth, and his message this, Thy father Polybus hath passed away. What? Let me have it, stranger, from thy mouth. If I must first make plain beyond a doubt my message, know that Polybus is dead. By treachery, or by sickness visited? One touch will send an old man to his rest. So of some malady he died, poor man. Yes, having measured the full span of years. Out on it, lady. Why should one regard the Pythian hearth, or birds that scream in air? Did they not point at me as doomed to slay my father? But he's dead and in his grave, and here am I, who ne'er unsheathed a sword, unless the longing for his absent son killed him, and so I slew him in a sense. But as they stand, the oracles are dead, dust, ashes, nothing, dead as Polybius. Say, did not I foretell this long ago? Thou didst, but I was misled by my fear. Then let I no more weigh upon thy soul. Must I not fear my mother's marriage bed? Why should a mortal man, the sport of chance, with no assured for knowledge be afraid? Best live a careless life from hand to mouth. This wedlock with thy mother fear not thou. How oft it chances that in dreams a man has wed his mother. He who least regards such brain-sick fantasies lives most at ease. I should have shared in full thy confidence, were not my mother living, since she lives, though half convinced I still must live in dread. And yet thy sire's death lights out darkness much. Much, but my fear is touching her who lives. Who may this woman be whom thus you fear? Merope, stranger, wife of Polybius. And what of her can cause you any fear? A heaven-sent oracle of dread import. A mystery. Or may a stranger hear it? Aye, tis no secret. Loxias once foretold that I should mate with mine own mother, and shed with my own hands the blood of my own sire. Hence Corinth was for many a year to me a home distant, and I trove abroad. But missed the sweetest sight my parents' face. Was this the fear that exiled thee from home? Yea, and the dread of slaying my own sire. Why, since I came to give thee pleasure, king, have I not rid thee of this second fear? Well, thou shalt have due guerdon for thy pains. Well, I confess what chiefly made me come was hope to profit by thy coming home. Nay, I will ne'er go near my parents more. My son, tis plain. Thou knowest not what thou doest. How so, old man? For heaven's sake, tell me all. If this is why thou dreadest to return. Yea, lest the God's word be fulfilled in me. Lest through thy parents thou shouldst be accursed? This and none other is my constant dread. Dost thou not know thy fears are baseless all? How baseless, if I am their very son? Since Polybus was not to thee in blood. What sayst thou? Was not Polybius my sire? As much thy sire as I am, and no more. My sire no more to me than one who is naught? Since I beget thee not, no more did he. What reason had he then to call me son? Know that he took thee from my hands a gift. Yet, if no child of his, he loved me well. A childless man till then, he warmed to thee. A foundling or a purchased slave, this child? I found thee in Cytherian's wooded glens. What led thee to explore these upland glades? My business was to tend the mountain flocks. A vagrant shepherd, journeying for hire. True. But thy saviour in that hour, my son. My saviour? From what harm? What ailed me then? Those ankle joints are evidence enow. Ah, why remind me of that ancient saw? I loosed the pin that riveted thy feet. 
Yes, from my cradle that dread brand I bore. Whence thou derivest the name that still is thine? Who did it? I adjure thee, tell. Tell me who. Say, was it father? Mother? I know not. The man from whom I had thee may know more. What? Did another find me, not thyself? Not I. Another shepherd gave thee me. Who was he? Wouldst thou know again the man? He passed indeed for one of Laius's house. The king who ruled the country long ago? The same. He was a herdsman of the king. And is he living still for me to see him? His fellow countrymen should best know that. Doth any bystander among you know the herd he speaks of, or by seeing him afield or in the city? Answer straight. The hour hath come to clear this business up. Methinks he means none other than the hind, whom thou anon wert fain to see, but that our queen Jocasta best of all could tell. Madam, dost know the man we sent to fetch? Is it the same of whom the stranger speaks? Who is the man? What matter? Let it be. To a waste of thought to weigh such idle words. No, with such guiding clues I cannot fail to bring to light the secret of my birth. Oh, as thou carest for thy life, give o'er this quest. Enough the anguish I endure. Be of good cheer, though I be proved the son of a bondswoman. Ay, through three descents triply a slave, thy honour is unsmirched. Yet humour me, I pray thee, do not this. I cannot. I must probe the matter home. Tis for thy sake I advise thee for the best. I grow impatient of this best advice. Ah, mayst thou ne'er discover who thou art. Go, fetch me here the herd, and leave yon woman to glory in her pride of ancestry. Oh, woe is thee, poor wretch! With that last word I leave thee, henceforth silent evermore. Exit Jocasta. Why, Oedipus, why, why stunned with passionate, passionate grief, grief hath the queen thus, thus departed? departed. Much I fear from this dead calm will burst a storm of woes. Let the storm burst. My fixed resolve still holds to learn my lineage, be it ne'er so low. It may be she, with all a woman's pride, thinks scorn of my base parentage. But I, who rank myself as fortune's favourite child, the giver of good gifts, shall not be shamed. She is my mother, and the changing moon's my brethren, and with them I wax and wane. Thus sprung, why should I fear to trace my birth? Nothing could make me other than I am. If my soul prophetic ere not, ere not, if my wisdom ought avail, thee, Cithern, I shall hail as the nurse and foster mother of our Oedipus shall greet ere tomorrow's full moon rises, and exalt thee as is meet. Dance and song shall hymn thy praises, lover of our royal race. Phoebus, may my words find grace. Child, who bear thee, nymph or goddess? Sure, thy sure was more than man. Haply the hell roamer Pan of Didloxius beget thee, for he haunts the upland wold of Silene's lord or Bacchus, dweller on the hilltops cold. Did some Hellasonian Oread give him thee a newborn joy, nymphs with which he loved to toy? Elders, if I, who never yet before have met the man, may make a guess. Methinks I see the herdsman whom we long have sought. His time-worn aspect matches with the years of yonder aged messenger. Besides, I seem to recognise the men who bring him as servants of my own. But you, perchance, having in past days known or seen the herd, may better, by sure knowledge, my surmise. I recognise him. No lies house. A simple hind, but true as any man. Enter herdsman. Corinthians, stranger, I address thee first. Is this the man thou meanest? This is he. And now, old man, look up and answer all I ask thee. 
Wast thou once of Laius's house? I was. A thrall, not purchased, but home-bred. What was thy business? How wast thou employed? The best part of my life I tended sheep. What were the pastures thou didst most frequent? Kithiron and the neighbouring Alps. Then there thou must have known yon man, at least by fame. Yon man? In what way? What man dost thou mean? The man here, having met him in past times. Offhand, I cannot call him well to mind. No wonder, master. But I will revive his blunted memories. Sure he can recall what time together both we drove our flocks, he two, I one, on the Cytherian range for three long summers. I his mate from spring till rose Arcturus. Then in winter time I led mine home, he his to Laius folds. Did these things happen as I say, or no? Tis long ago, but all thou sayst is true. Well, thou must then remember giving me a child to rear as my own foster son. Why dost thou ask this question? What of that? Friend, he that stands before thee was that child. A plague upon thee, hold thy wanton tongue. Softly, old man, rebuke him not. Thy words are more deserving chastisement than his. O oh, best of masters, what is my offence? Not answering what he asks about the child. He speaks at random, babbles like a fool. If thou lack'st grace to speak, I'll loose thy tongue. For mercy's sake, abuse not an old man. Arrest the villain, seize and pinion him. Alack, alack! What have I done? What wouldst thou further learn? Didst thou give this man the child of whom he asks? I did, and would that I had died that day. And die thou shalt, unless thou tell the truth. But if I tell it, I am doubly lost. The knave, methinks, will still prevaricate. Nay, I confessed I gave it long ago. Whence came it? Was it thine, or given to thee? I had it from another. Twas not mine. From whom of these our townsmen, and what house? Forbear, for God's sake, master, ask no more. If I must question thee again, thou art lost. Well then, it was a child of Laius' house. Slave-born, or one of Laius' own race? Ah, oh, me, I stand upon the perilous edge of speech. And I of hearing. But I still must hear. No, then, the child was by repute his own, but she within thy consort best could tell. What? She? She gave it thee? Tis so, my king. With what intent? To make away with it. What? She, its mother? Fearing a dread weird. What weird? Twas told that he should slay his sire. What didst thou give it then to this old man? Through pity, master, for the babe, I thought he'd take it to the country whence he came, but he preserved it for the worst of woes. For if thou art in sooth what this man saith, God pity thee, thou wast to misery born. Ah, me, ah, me, all brought to pass, all true. O oh, light, may I behold thee never more. I stand a wretch in birth, in wedlock cursed, a parricide, incestuously, triply cursed. Exit Oedipus. Races of mortal man, whose life is but a span, I count ye but the shadow of a shade. For he who most doth know of bliss hath but the show, a moment, and the visions pale and fade. Thy fall, O Oedipus, thy piteous fall, warns me none born of woman blessed to call. For he of marksman best, O Zeus, outshot the rest, and won the prize supreme of wealth and power. By him, By him the vulture, the vulture maid was quelled, was quelled her witchery her laid. laid, he rose our saviour and the land's strong, strong tower. tower. 
We hailed the king, king, and from that day adored adored of mighty Thebes, the the universal universal lord. Lord. O heavy hand of fate, fate. who now now more more desolate, desolate. whose tale tale more sad than than mine, mine. whose lot more dire. dire. O Oedipus, Oedipus, discrowned head, head. thy cradle cradle was thy marriage bed. bed. One harbor sufficed, sufficed for son for and son sire. sire. How could How the soil thy father eared so long endure to bear in silence such, such a wrong? All seeing time, time have caught have guilt, guilt, and to justice, justice brought the son and sire commingled in one bed. O oh, child of lies, ill-starred race, race, what I had never beheld, beheld thy face. face. I raise for thee a dirge as o'er the dead. dead. Yet sooth to say, say, through thee I drew new new breath, breath, and now now through thee I feel feel a second second death. death. Enter second messenger. Most grave and reverend senators of Thebes, what deeds ye soon must hear, what sights behold. How will ye mourn if, true-born patriots, ye reverence still the race of Labdicus, nor Ister or nor all faces as flood I ween could wash away the blood stains from this house. The ills it shrouds, or soon will bring to light, ills wrought of malice not unwittingly, the worst art to bear our self inflicted wounds. Grievous enough for all our tears and groans are past calamities. What canst thou add? My tale is quickly told and quickly heard. Our sovereign lady Queen Jocasta's dead. Alas, Alas, poor poor queen! queen. How came came she by her death? By her own hand, and all the horror of it. Not having seen, yet cannot comprehend. Nathless, as far as my poor memory serves, I will relate the unhappy lady's woe. When in her frenzy she had passed inside the vestibule, she hurried straight to win the bridal chamber, clutching at her hair with both her hands, and once within the room she shut the doors behind her with a crash. Laius, she cried, and called her husband dead. Long, long ago her thought was of that child by him begot, the son by whom the sire was murdered, and the mother left to breed, with her own seed, a monstrous progeny. Then she bewailed the marriage bed, whereon, poor wretch, she had conceived a double brood, husband by husband, children by her child. What happened after that I cannot tell nor how the end befell, for with a shriek burst on us Oedipus, all eyes were fixed on Oedipus, as up and down he strode, nor could we mark her agony to the end, for stalking to and fro a sword, he cried, where is the wife, no wife, the teeming womb, that bore a double harvest, me and mine? And in his frenzy some supernal power, nor mortal, surely none of us who watched him, guided his footsteps, with a terrible shriek, as though one beckoned him, he crashed against the folding doors, and from their staples forced the wrenched bolts and hurled himself within. Then we beheld the woman hanging there, a running noose entwined about her neck. But when he saw her, with a maddened roar, he loosed the cord, and when her wretched corpse lay stretched on earth, what followed? Oh, twas dread! He tore the golden brooches that upheld her queenly robes, upraised them high and smote, full on his eyeballs, uttering words like this, No more shall ye behold the sights of woe, deeds I have suffered and myself have wrought, henceforward quenched in darkness shall ye see, those ye should ne'er have seen, now blind to those whom, when I saw, I vainly yearned to know. Such was the burden of his moan whereto, Not once but oft he struck with his hand, uplift his eyes, And at each stroke the ensanguined orbs bedewed his beard, Not oozing drop by drop, but one black gory downpour, thick as hail. Such evils issuing from the double source Have whelmed them both, confounding man and wife. Till now the storied fortune of this house Was fortunate indeed, but from this day, woe, Lamentation, ruin, death, disgrace, all ills that can be named, all, 
all are theirs. But hath he still no respite from his pain? He cries, unbar the doors and let all Thebes behold the slayer of his sire. His mother's, that shameful word my lips may not repeat. He vows to fly self-banished from the land, nor stay to bring upon his house the curse himself had uttered. But he has no strength, nor one to guide him, and his tortures more than man can suffer, as yourselves will see. For lo, the palace portals are unbarred, and soon ye shall behold a sight so sad, that he who must abhorred would pity it. Enter Oedipus, blinded. Woeful sight! More woeful none these sad eyes have looked upon. Whence this madness? None can tell who did cast on me his spell, prowling all my life around, leaping with a demon bound. Hapless wretch, how can I brook on thy misery to look? Though to gaze on thee I yearn, much to question, much to learn. Horror struck, away I turn. Ah, oh, me, ah, oh, woe is me. Ah, oh, whither am I born? Now, like a ghost forlorn, my voice flits from me on the air. On, on the demon goads, the end, ah, oh, where? An end too dread to tell, too dark to see. Dark, dark, the horror of darkness, like a shroud, wraps me, and bears me on through mist and cloud. Ah, me, ah, me, what spasms athwart me shoot, what pangs of agonizing memory. No marvel, no marvel if in such a plight thou feel'st the, the double weight of past and present woes. Ah, friend, still loyal, constant, still and kind, thou carest for the blind, I know thee near, and though bereft of eyes, Thy voice I recognize. O oh, doer of dread deeds, how couldst thou mar thy vision thus? What demon goaded thee? Apollo, friend, Apollo. He it was that brought these ills to pass. But the right hand that dealt the blow was mine, none other. How, how could I longer see when sight brought no delight? Alas, 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 Say, friends, can any look or voice or touch of love henceforth my heart rejoice? Haste, friends, no fond delay. Take the twice cursed away, far from all ken, the man abhorred of gods, accursed of men. Oh, thy despair oh, well despair suits well thy suits desperate, desperate case. case. But I had never I looked never upon looked my, my face. face. My curse on him, who e'er unrived the waif's fell fetters, and my life revived. He meant me well, yet had he left me there, he had saved my friends and me a world of care. I too had wished, wished it so. Then had I never come to shed my father's blood, nor climbed my mother's bed. The monstrous offspring of a womb defiled, Co-mate of him who gendered me and child. Was ever man before afflicted thus, like Oedipus? I cannot say, I cannot say that thou hast, hast counselled counsel well, 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 for thou wert better, better dead, dead than, than living than blind. blind. What's done was well done. Thou canst never shake my firm belief. A truce to argument, for had I sight, I know not with what eyes I could have met my father in the shades, or my poor mother, since against the twain I sinned, a sin no gallows could atone. Aye, but ye say the sight of children joys a parent's eyes. What? Born as mine were born? No. Such sight could never bring me joy. Nor this fair city, with its battlements, its temples, and the statues of its gods. 
sights from which I, now wretchedest of all, once ranked the foremost Theban in all Thebes, by my own sentence am cut off, condemned by my own proclamation, gainst the wretch, the miscreant, by heaven itself declared unclean, and of the race of Laius, thus branded as a felon by myself. How had I dared to look you in the face? Nay, had I known a way to choke the springs of hearing, I had never shrunk to make a dungeon of this miserable frame, cut off from sight and hearing. For tis bliss to bide in regions sorrow cannot reach. Why didst thou harbour me, Scytheron? Why didst thou not take and slay me? Then I never had shown to men the secret of my birth. O oh, Polybius, O oh, Corinth, O oh, my home, home of my ancestors, so wast thou called, how fair a nursling then I seemed, how foul the canker that lay festering in the bud. Now is the blight revealed of root and fruit, Ye triple high roads, and thou hidden glen, coppice, and pass, where meet the three branched ways, ye drank my blood, the life blood these hands spilt, my father's. Do ye call to mind, perchance, those deeds of mine ye witnessed, and the work I wrought thereafter when I came to Thebes? O oh, fatal wedlock! Thou didst give me birth, and, having borne me, sowed against my seed, mingling the blood of fathers, brothers, children, brides, wives, and mothers, an incestuous brood. All horrors that are wrought beneath the sun, horrors so foul, to name them were unmeet. Oh, I adjure you, hide me anywhere, far from this land, or slay me straight, or cast me down to the depths of oceans out of sight. Come hither, deign to touch an abject wretch. Draw near, and fear not. I myself must bear the load of guilt that none but I can share. Enter Creon. Lo, here is Creon, the one man to grant thy prayer by action or advice for he has left the state's sole guardian in thy stead. Ah, me! What words to accost him can I find? What cause has he to trust me? In the past I have been proved his rancorous enemy. Not in derision, Oedipus, I come, nor to upbraid thee with thy past misdeeds. Two bystanders. But shame upon you! If ye feel no sense of human decencies, at least revere the sun whose light beholds and nurtures all. Leave not thus nakedly for all to gaze at, a horror neither earth nor rain from heaven nor light will suffer. Lead him straight within, for it is seemly that a kinsman's woes be heard by kin and seen by kin alone. Oh, listen! Since thy presence comes to me a shock of glad surprise, So noble thou, and I so vile, O oh, grant me one small boon, I ask it not on my behalf, but thine. And what the favour thou wouldst crave of me? Forth from thy borders thrust me with all speed, Set me within some vasty desert, Where no mortal voice shall greet me any more. This had I done already, but I deemed it first behooved me to consult the god. His will was set forth fully, to destroy the parricide, the scoundrel, and I am he. Yea, so he spake, but in our present plight twere better to consult the god anew. Dare ye inquire concerning such a wretch? Yea, for thyself wouldst credit now his word. Aye. And on thee, in all humility, I lay this charge. Let her who lies within receive such burial as thou shalt ordain. Such rites tis thine as brother to perform. But for myself, O oh, never let my Thebes, the city of my sires, be doomed to bear the burden of my presence while I live. No, 
Let me be a dweller on the hills. On yonder mount sit Aaron, famed as mine, my tomb predestined for me by my sire and mother while they lived, that I might die slain as they sought to slay me when alive. This much I know full surely, nor disease shall end my days, nor any common chance, for I had ne'er been snatched from death unless I was predestined to some awful doom. So be it. I reck not how fate deals with me, but my unhappy children. For my sons, be not concerned, O Creon, they are men, and for themselves, where'er they be, can fend. But for my daughters twain, poor innocent maids, who ever sat beside me at the board, sharing my viands, drinking of my cup, for them I pray thee care, and if thou wilt, oh, might I feel their touch and make my moan. Hear me, O oh prince, my noble-hearted prince, could I but blindly touch them with my hands, I'd think they were still mine, as when I saw. Antigone and Ismene are led in. What say I? Can it be my pretty ones whose sobs I hear? Has Creon pitied me, and sent me my two darlings? Can this be? Tis true. Twas I have procured thee this delight, knowing the joy they were to thee of old. God speed thee, and as meed for bringing them, may Providence deal with thee kindlier than it has dealt with me. O children mine, where are ye? Let me clasp you with these hands, a brother's hands, a father's hands, that made lack-lustre sockets of his once bright eyes, hands of a man who blindly, recklessly, became your sire by her from whom he sprang. Though I cannot behold you, I must weep in thinking of the evil days to come, the slights and wrongs that men will put upon you. Where'er ye go to feast or festival, no merry-making will it prove for you. But oft abashed in tears ye will return. And when ye come to marriageable years, Where's the bold wooers who will jeopardize To take unto himself such disrepute As to my children's children still must cling? For what of infamy is lacking here? Their father slew his father, sowed the seed where he himself was gendered, and begat these maidens at the source whereof he sprung. Such are the jibes that men will cast at you. Who then will wed you? None, I ween. But ye must pine, poor maids, in single barrenness. O oh, prince, Menocetia's son, to thee I turn. With thee it rests to father them, For we, their natural parents, both of us are lost. O oh, leave them not to wander, poor, unwed, thy kin, Nor let them share my low estate, O oh, pity them, so young, And but for thee all destitute. Thy hand upon it, prince, To you, my children, I had much to say, Were ye but ripe to hear. Let this suffice. Pray ye may find some home, and live content, and may your lot prove happier than your sire's. Thou hast had enough of weeping. Pass within. I must obey, though tis grievous. Weep not. Everything must have its day. Well, I go, but on condition. What thy terms for going say? Send me from the land an exile. Ask this of the gods, not me. But I am the gods' abhorrence. Then they soon will grant thy plea. Lead me hence, then. I am willing. Come, but let thy children go. Rob me not of these my children. Crave not mastery in all. For the mastery that raised thee was thy bane, and wrought thy fall. Look ye, countrymen and the beans. This is Oedipus the Great. He who knew the Sphinx's riddle, and was mightiest in our state. 
Who of all our townsmen gazed not on his fame with envious eyes? Now in what a sea of trouble sunk and overwhelmed he lies. Therefore, wait to see life's ending ere thou count one mortal blessed. Wait, wait, till free from pain and sorrow he has gained his final rest. End of part two.